The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. Welcome to Compelling <laughs> Conversations. Uh, this is a program that is designed for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Lee, when I think about compelling conversations and, you know, I thought about how the gospel is going to drive these conversations. Yeah, yeah. And I thought about, you know, just the definition of the term. You know, I like definition. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I was thinking about, you know, what does compelling mean? And the terms that I uh, saw was uh, captivating, fascinating. Uh -huh. Uh, thrilling, yeah. reasonable, right, right, right. Uh, powerful, mm -hmm. influential, right. uh, life changing. You uh -huh. know, I, I even like the term sound. Yeah, you yeah. know, because when you think about the gospel, you know, can you talk about sound just a little bit in terms of the gospel? I mean, it's the weight of the gospel. It's the beauty of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we hear that word. Uh, well, we hear it frequently. Mm -hmm. People talk about preaching the gospel. We singing gospel music, but we never deal with the weight, the beauty, what it actually means, what it does to the soul mm -hmm. of the individual, mm -hmm. the shalom that it brings us, the peace that it brings us. You know, we live <laughs> in a culture where people are turning to drugs, they're turning to sex, they're turning to all kinds of things trying to soothe mm -hmm. the soul. Uh, but the only thing that can bring about the soothing of the soul is the weight and the beauty of the gospel itself, what God has done through Jesus Christ on our behalf. Amen. And so that message <laughs> is thrilling to me. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I was reading a book many years ago and it was talking about the gospel, how that word itself means news that is too good to be true. And, and so that blows my mind that, that, that God would do that through his son to free us, to liberate us, knowing how messed up I was um, and, and how I wasn't even pursuing God. I wasn't <laughs> running after him. He wasn't on my mind. Amen. But yet it, it, he saw fit to send his son to reconcile, to redeem me, to rescue me. Amen. And so that's what this whole program Bram is Amen. about is to deal with those realities not just on the surface mm -hmm. level but mm -hmm. to dig way Amen. down deep um d.a carson says something about the gospel and i see this in our culture today it says that the gospel is not lost immediately it says first the gospel is accepted then it is assumed mm -hmm. it's confused mm -hmm. and then it's lost mm -hmm. I've seen that so many times. I, I, my mind immediately goes back to a conversation I was having with a couple of pastors a couple of years ago. We were at the uh, Panera Bread here in Silver Spring. Okay. And, you know, pastors get together and, you know, we kind of talk about what we're doing in sure. our ministries. Sure. Sure. And, and I was asked the question, okay, what, what are you pursuing right now? What is the thrust of your ministry right now? And I said to them, right now, I'm focusing on the gospel. Amen. Amen. And, and one of the pastors said to me, he said, yeah, man, that's what I've been to. I've been doing as well. I've been focusing on the gospel, telling people we got to get back to prayer. We got to get back to Bible study. We got to get back to fasting. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, well, hold on, bro. That's not the gospel. Right. Uh, the, the gospel is not about what we have to do. Amen. The gospel is about what God has, has done, done. for us. Amen. And so we have to change people's mindsets when we consider the gospel from just, you know, what we have to, to, to do to obtain God's favor mm -hmm. to help people realize that because we have been brought into the kindness of Jesus Christ, we already have his favor. Amen. And many times we, from our pulpits and from our teaching experiences, we, we, we nail people with what they have to do. You know, you have to pray. You have to do. Those are things we do. Don't get me sure, wrong. They, sure. they, they, they're a part of they're part our of growth. They're, they're part of what God has built into Christianity that causes our love for him to increase Amen. and our knowledge of him to increase. But that is not what brings about justification. So to me, I realized in that moment that there is a lot of uh, gospel confusion, mm -hmm. at least. Amen. You know, I'm not saying that the gospel loss is lost, but there is some confusion about the gospel. So compelling conversations will kind of clarify. Yes. And uh, just just bring things to light in yeah. terms of what the gospel really is. Um, you know, one of the valuable pieces that, uh, going back to the, the definition mm -hmm. of compelling, uh, I, 
was thinking about how Jesus said, come follow me. Yeah. And, and when you think about, you know, him saying, come follow me, come follow me. He's saying, look, allow me to thrill you. Yeah. Watch me thrill you. Right. Not just for your, uh, uh, not just for the fun of it, mm -hmm. but for your life to be changed, for your life to be transformed, for you to be made new because of the gospel. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like uh, a couple of years ago, I flew over the Grand Canyon uh, going into uh, <laughs> California. And I remember flying over that thing and just seeing the majesty, mm -hmm. how big, how large how that is. And man, I thought to myself, how great yeah. is my God <laughs> that he that he designed that thing, mm -hmm. that he built that thing out, and that he's larger than Amen. that. Man, you know, I saw that in his majesty, and it made me feel some kind of way. Amen. And that, it did. It thrilled me. It Amen. overwhelmed me. And Amen. that's how it is when you perceive or understand you, how robust, Thank how you, big, how large. Amen. The gospel is, uh, you know, I hear people talk about, and I've done this myself, I made the statement that the gospel is the ABCs of the faith. Sure. It is the A through Z, Z of the faith. <laughs> it's not just the ABCs, Amen. it's the A through Z of the faith. And, and you, and, and we believe in that. It's Absolutely. Not, it's not as if it's, it's something that we, it's on a poster or something we just right. walk past. Right. It's, it's something that we believe in and we live by. Oh, absolutely. We live by that. Um, you know, I've had some experiences that made me kind of tune into the power of the gospel, the, the weight of the gospel, the beauty of the gospel, and also how ignorant I was of the gospel. Now, many years ago, I, I preached at uh, an event, and I remember uh, how I was talking about all the things that we struggle with in life, just kind of dealing with those uh, realities mm -hmm. and at the end of that sermon uh, I was you know, bringing the sermon to a conclusion and my answer to all of those problems was the gospel Amen. now when I said that my anticipation was that people were going <laughs> to rejoice that worship was going to explode it just kind of looked at me and mm -hmm. it was like it was crickets in the sanctuary sure. and, and so in that moment it dawned on me that I'm, I'm preaching to individuals that own, that that do not understand the beauty and the weight of the gospel. Now, let me talk about me as well. Sure. I did not know the gospel good enough to bring clarity. Sure. And so conviction came upon my heart. I'm here and I'm sure somebody got something out of that because God is faithful. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I was convicted that I did not understand the beauty of the gospel enough that in that environment, I could not shine a light on what God has done through Jesus Christ on our behalf. And so that challenged me or compelled me, Amen. compelling. Amen. It compelled me to, to dig deep, to get to gain clarity and understanding, not just from a head perspective, but also from a heart perspective, Amen. to be able to, com to communicate the beauties, the glories of the gospel to individuals that have never heard it, Amen. That, that have not been in church or that are not church, to communicate it in such a way that they can say, you know, I get this, I, I understand this. Whether they believe it or not, it's Amen. a different reality. Amen. But at least there's some level of clarity in terms of what it is I'm trying to communicate about uh, our Savior's work. Hey Amen. The thing that blesses me about you sharing that is that it's not just our testimony that's elevated, yeah. but it's, it's his testimony. It's his testimony. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the blessing of yeah. the gospel. Yeah, and, and that's the challenge. Amen. You know, because... Uh, again, I'm, I can only speak for me, not other pastors. Sure. You, you get, you find yourself in that rut where you're talking about, well, let me tell you or teach you about ten steps to financial sure. freedom, sure. or eight steps to having a wonderful family, mm -hmm. or six steps of how to get a better job. You, you find yourself in that pattern, and uh, but in that whole pattern, where, where is Christ? Right. Where, where is um, the work that Jesus Christ has done, done on our Amen. behalf Amen. that enables us to do that work. And that's what people need to know. Yeah, they need to what, know that work absolutely. that has been done absolutely. on our behalf. That's what propels us to be successful in all the other areas. Mm -hmm. But if we minimize the gospel to just Jesus down on the cross and even forget about the resurrection, which mm -hmm. brought about the life-giving spirit that we walk in, but if we just leave him on that cross... Mm -hmm. And not talking about no. not talk about what the full implications of that reality, mm -hmm. uh, what that what that means. Amen. Then we still haven't communicated <laughs> a weighty, robust Amen. gospel that 
addresses all those issues. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we find ourselves weakening the gospel as opposed to strengthening the gospel. Amen. Because he rose, we can rise through some things by his power, by his grace, yeah. by his authority, right. by his goodness, yeah. by his faithfulness, yeah. because of his joy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we can, we can rise. Amen. Because he got up from the grave, it brought us about, it brought to us power to overcome all Amen. things. Amen. I, I remember uh, listening to a teacher many years ago and he talked about the fact that if Jesus just rose, uh, or if Jesus just died on the cross, we would be um, uh, forgiven corpse. Mm -hmm. Just forgiven corpse. But what brought about the power to walk the newness of life was the resurrection. And, and so that full robust message of the gospel is required and necessary. Amen. Well, we were, we were dead in our yeah. trespasses, in our sins. Yeah. Um, until he said, come forth. Absolutely. Until he breathed new life into yeah. us. Yeah. So you should live and not die. Amen. And let's talk a little bit about who we are as individuals. Sure. You know, we talked about why we are doing this, mm -hmm. how important this message is. Um, my name is Lee Joyner. Um, I am the son of a uh, pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm a PK. I've grown up in church. <laughs> I've been in church all my life. Uh, my father used to make a statement that, where he said that he went to church nine months before he was born. Uh, that was my reality as well. Amen. I've been in church all my life. As a matter of fact, I tell people that you know, right after I was born, I think before I was a week old, uh, my father took me to church. My mother couldn't come, but my dad took me to church. Amen. And uh, the funny thing about that story is that I had an older sister. They did not, you know, it wasn't like, today's economy where you know the sex of the child sure. before the child is born. They didn't know what I was going to be until I got here. Right. Well, they didn't even have clothes for me. My father put my sister's dress on me all right. and took me to church <laughs> before. It's all right. Before I was a week old. And so, you know, I've been in church all my life. I am, um, I, I came from a family of five siblings. Um, I really have one biological sister but my father's brother passed at a young age, mm -hmm. and uh, his children and uh, his widow came to live with us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we kind of merged as sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. So uh, I say it's five of us, uh, even though I only have one biological uh, sister. Sure. And so that's my family structure. That's where I came from. Sure. Um, and, and what many people don't know is I was a church musician and worship leader for years. Amen. Um, many years ago, you know, I played the piano and the organ all over D.C. <laughs> and different churches uh, while I was trying to find myself. Uh, but when God captured my heart, Amen. I went back home uh, to my home church and worked with my father uh, exclusively. Uh, another thing about me is that I've been married to 30, I've been married for 30 years <laughs> to the wife of my youth. Uh, me and my baby girl, we grew up in church together. Carmen right. John, I know she's watching this. Love you, baby. Thank you for all the support. <laughs> Uh, we uh, grew up in church together. Our fathers were ordained as elders on the same day. Uh, as a matter of fact, when my father started this church, um, her father, my wife's father, uh, was part of that launch group that started Christ Church. Um, and, and so we, we've been married for um, 30 years. Amen. And uh, we have three beautiful children. Actually, I actually have four kids. Uh, my oldest wasn't is not my birth child. Mm -hmm. But God, God, she was a gift to me by the sovereign God of the universe, Amen. and I had the chance uh, to raise her, and I and I love her deeply. So my oldest lives in North Carolina, South Carolina now, with her husband and her kids. Uh, I have another daughter uh, who just graduated from Bowie State. Yeah, yeah, just got a job <laughs> two weeks ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so really excited about that. I have a, a older son. My oldest son who uh, is a, uh, was a freshman at um, PG Community College. Uh -huh. He's taking a year off to kind of find himself a little bit, but right. uh, right. he's doing very well. I'm very proud of that boy mm -hmm. and uh, his process of trying to figure out who he is as a man child. Mm -hmm. And then I have a baby boy who is a senior this year who's about to graduate uh, high school, and I'm so excited yeah, about man. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of them are involved in our church. Mm -hmm. Another thing is I am blessed to be uh, the lead past at Impact DMV Church. Praise God. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm excited about that. That was a, a work of God. That's Amen. something he did for us. I didn't see that coming. Great work. Uh, and we'll talk more about how that came to be later on. And we're actually celebrating our first year anniversary as Impact Amen. DMV this coming <laughs> Sunday. 
uh, and, and we're thankful uh, to God for that work. Amen. George, tell me a little, a little bit about yourself, bro. Amen. Well, I, th I just thank God. Uh, I'm George Rollins, yeah. and I have worked with you yeah. most of my life <laughs> <laughs> in ministry, and um, I am a husband uh, yeah. to my beautiful wife, Aura May Rollins. I just want to say hi to her today, and... Um, I am a father to Andre, Genesis, Caitlin, Gabriel, <laughs> and Micah. Yes. So I say hello to them today. But uh, just glad about the opportunity just to serve in ministry. Yeah. Uh, the work that God has given us to do together. Yeah. Uh, we've been teachers. We yeah. have uh, done workshops and training. Yeah. Uh, but most of all, we have um, just supported uh, individuals in their development and growth in ministry. And so yeah. uh, just blessed by the opportunity to uh, also be a son, to, yeah. to be a husband, to be a worker in the yeah. ministry, yeah. Um, and to work with you. It's yeah. been a blessing to me, and it's, it has helped me to be a better man. And so I'm glad we've had this, we have this opportunity yeah. just yeah. to sit together and just yeah. uh, dig a little deeper in these compelling conversations. Absolutely. <laughs> One thing I'd like to add to that is that both of us, I believe in giving homage to those that have invested in you deeply. Both of us are the products of my father, uh, Bishop Henry Joyner, uh, a great man of God. He served Christ Church for 30 years before I became the lead pastor. Uh, and then even after I became the lead pastor, man, he, he worked along with us. He just became one of the <laughs> elders on the board, which is kind of unheard of. It is. <laughs> um, you know, people don't want to do that once once they reach that elder stat, right. that bishop status. <laughs> they definitely don't believe in serving under anybody That's else. Right. Um, but just the humility that that man has walked in, Amen. my father, uh, is just unbelievable. And so he uh, released the church to me um, four years ago, and he uh, became one of the elders uh, in our church. And even today at Impact DMV, he is still uh, a bishop in the house, <laughs> yes, uh, and, but he functions or leads with uh, the eldership in that congregation, Amen. and he's still teaching us. Amen. Uh, he's still, still, teach, still, still teach. teaching us. <laughs> and, and so I, I always want to give credit where credit Amen. is due. Amen. We we are not here today uh, on our own merit, not but uh, because of the sovereign God of the universe saw fit uh, to bring Henry M. Uh, join a senior <laughs> uh, into ministry and allow us to be the products of that ministry. Amen. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Dad, for that. Uh, actually, George here is my cousin. Um, our parents are siblings. Amen. And so we've grown up together. He's been like my little brother forever. Um, but I do want to give homage to my dad for uh, his faithfulness uh, to the gospel message and to the work of the Lord. And well, well, there's a little teaching we want to do today. We want to talk a little bit about one aspect of the of the gospel. The gospel is so vast. Um, it, one author said it's like a diamond. You take that diamond, you lift it up in the air, and no matter what angle you look at it from, you see something different. You see something beautiful. And that's how uh, the gospel is, in particular when you perceive or consider uh, the work of Jesus Christ. And today we want to talk about the substitutionary atonement. Uh, substitutionary atonement. Um, and it may seem like a big term, but really it isn't. And we're going to explain some of this today. And what we don't complete today, we're going to jump on next week. That's right. Because we both are uh, slightly uh, long-winded, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> slightly long-winded. Uh, but before I talk about this, I want to explain to you why this is so important mm -hmm. to me as an individual. Uh, I don't sit here as a man that doesn't have flaws. Uh, I've had flaws. I've had experiences in my past. Um, and those that impact DMV, they tell you that I express those, I share those with the congregation. One is to let them know that I'm human. Amen. Secondly, I like to communicate the glories of the cross, Amen. the Amen. beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I, I share my testimony, because the Bible said they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. And so, so I, I like to share my testimony with my congregation. There was an experience that I had when I was a teenager that has haunted me or did haunt me for many, many years. Um, not to tell the whole story, but just to give you enough to help you understand why substitutionary atonement is so important to me, is that when I was a teenager, I used to smoke uh, uh, a little marijuana, a little, little, little reefers, as the uh, 
the boys used to say. And I remember one experience where me and a group of friends, and all of us were uh, church kids, we were uh, smoking reefer together uh, in a field. And uh, we ran out of rolling paper. Mm -hmm. And so I ran back to the church and I ripped the paper out of a uh, page out of the Bible, ran back out to the field, put the reefer in the paper, rolled it up, mm -hmm. and we smoked a joint of reefer um, in the Bible paper. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna tell you, that grieved me. Now in the moment it didn't mm -hmm. grieve me, sure. it was funny. Sure. And we had a good time, we laughed about it and we talked about it for years. Mm -hmm. But when God touched my heart and brought me into his kindness, Amen. my mind, the enemy is never going to let you forget any of the experiences that you had. That was such a deliberate action against the sovereign God of the universe that the enemy played that back in my head on a regular basis. So even after I became a believer, that was one thing that constantly challenged me whether, whether or not uh, I was truly a believer. True. Um, whether or not God would accept my ministry, whether it be uh, my musicianship or when I used to lead worship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or when I first started teaching or mm -hmm. preaching, mm -hmm. uh, that always challenged me. And whenever I stood up to preach or to teach or to sing, I'm telling you, without mm -hmm. fail, the enemy would always bring that back to my mind mm -hmm. as to say to me, you're not worthy. You're not worthy. And the reality is, still is today, I'm still not worthy. Right. The only thing that makes me accepted in the beloved right. is the atoning work of Jesus Amen. Christ, and I never forget that. Amen. And the substitutionary atonement uh, is important to me because what that says is that Jesus died in my place. Yes, Lord. Not only did he die in my place, but when he died, not only did he absorb God's wrath for me, but he also, his blood cleansed me or purged me of, of that, that sin consciousness as it relates to that particular act. Now, there were many other things that happened that I did prior to salvation, but that was the one thing that I could never get out of my, get out of my mind. Um, Paul said something in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 3. It says this, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you, which you receive and which you stand, and by which you are being saved. Now catch that, a couple words that you mm -hmm. receive, mm -hmm. you stand in it, and you are being mm -hmm. saved. saved. Uh, he is sanctified forever, Hebrews 10, forget what mm -hmm. verse, uh, he, is, he is perfected forever those who are being sanctified. He is perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Mm -hmm. So as far as my standing with Jesus Christ, when I accept him, when I've been brought into his kindness, I am considered perfect. Amen. But my 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 emotions, mm -hmm. my actions, my behavior, <laughs> all that stuff is still being, being saved. <laughs> he says, if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. Now catch this. Mm -hmm. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. Amen. Paul said, now hold on, there's a lot of things I can talk to you mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of things. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of things he could have talked about. But he says, listen, I want to remind you what is most important. Yes, God. And he says the most important thing is that Christ has died for our sins. Sins. Amen. I, I, think, I think about that sin being the problem. Yeah, sin yeah. is the problem. Yeah. Sin, sin fractured our relationship yes. with God. Sin created this debt that only Christ could pay. Yeah. And he paid that penalty for us. Uh, God sent his son yeah, yeah. to pay that penalty for us. Absolutely. And in Isaiah 53 and 6, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Uh, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him yeah. the iniquity of us all. Oh, that's powerful. That is powerful. <laughs> Jesus text. bore our iniquity. Yeah. Uh, he carried our shame, our yeah. guilt, those memories, yes. those those uh, gentle reminders that yes. the enemy tries to bring up. He he came yeah. to carry that, take it away. to take it away. Amen. And, and so what you just said is not just something that just came out of your soul. There's a Bible for that. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, one of my favorite passages, it says this, For our sake he made him 
to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He bore our sin. There was a great exchange, all right? Yeah. He's taken the filth of our <laughs> lives and he has given Amen. us his righteousness. Amen. Amen. Uh, we were worthy of death. The Amen. Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Uh, we should have died, but we did not. Amen. Uh, he spared our life. He died on our and our stead. And the Bible talks about in Adam, we all die. And so because of Adam's failure to obey God, the wholeness, the shalom, uh, the beauty in which God created the universe mm -hmm. in, as you already said, that was fractured. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we live in this broken world and things happen, but it's through Jesus Christ that that curse is reversed. Amen. I think about John 8 and 32 where it says it, and you will know the truth, and and the truth will set you free. free. Yeah. And you know, I'm glad that you know that's what the gospel does for us. It mm -hmm. reveals to us the truth that we can walk in the freedom, in the liberty that God has given us. Yeah. In Ephesians two eight nine it says, "For it is by grace you have been saved, saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves; it is the gift of God, not by works, right? So that no one can boast." Correct. And so, um. I, I like that text in particular because the question has always been to me when you start dealing with this, this whole moralistic approach mm -hmm. to a justification uh -huh. <laughs> um, instead of receiving the free gift mm -hmm. of the gospel, mm -hmm. the atoning work of Jesus Christ, instead of that being applied to our lives, is, okay, if it's about works, then how many Bible studies do I have to go to to be right. justified? <laughs> Two a week, three a week. Well, how many do I have to? Right. Okay, <laughs> enough. How how long do I have to pray to be justified? Right, right. <laughs> do I have to pray an hour? Do will fifteen minutes be uh, sufficient? Right. Is that we we mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. measure that, can't measure. and so you find yourself constantly yeah. being under condemnation right. because you can never mm -hmm. do enough. Can never do enough. So I love the fact that Paul says, "Listen, it is not by our works." Uh, so we have no, nothing to boast about. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can never <laughs> walk with a swag right. uh, because we are believers. Uh, we are Christians uh, because the only reason we are who we are and have accomplished the things that we have accomplished in life, ministry or secularly, it is because of God's grace. Because of his grace. Because of his grace. Right. Um, so, so one thing that I think that gets lost uh, sometimes if you don't address the full gospel a message is uh, sin has to be paid for. Amen. God, God just can't, God's not just going to let sin go. Right. right. And, and we live in this era where, you know, we talk about the grace of God, and I think we've distorted that a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because we want to sin and then evoke the grace of God sure. over our sin. Sure. But grace is more than God's unmerited favor. Grace is also God's power. Amen. It, 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 it's to keep you from Amen. sinning as well. So both. don't don't just claim the grace aspect Amen. after you have sinned, but Amen. we need to proclaim and lean into God's grace prior to committing that sin because I'm telling you, God's grace is able to keep you from falling. And can I say, too, that yes. God's grace is sufficient. Yes. You know, and, and that's the general reminder for yes. us that, you know what, Lord, you can you can keep me from falling. Absolutely. Father, you can strengthen me in areas of weakness or challenge or even uh, things that, whatever the struggle may be, yes, mental, yes, yes. physical, emotional, psychological. Right. Father, you created us. Right. You know us. Yes. You know us by name, Father. Scripture says how even the follicles on our head, yes. our head follicles, Father, you know everyone. They right. are numbered. Yeah. And and you have the ability, Father, to, to keep us and help us uh, to push through the challenge. Yeah, yeah Whatever yeah. the challenge is, you yeah. can help us to press through by your power. Yeah. And it's good to know that you'd be there whenever we fall, as Marvin <laughs> Weiner said, but it's better to, it's know, better to know that we don't have, have to, to fall at all. Uh, and so sin just, it just won't go away. You, I, I was, I think I was sharing with you last night about my little grandson, uh, my oldest <laughs> daughter, Shana's uh, son, Noah, was at my house one day, and he was sitting on the stairs, and he, he was drinking some juice. He was, he was a little boy sure. at the time. And he spilled uh, grape juice on my stairs. <laughs> now, to me, some people get upset about that kind of stuff, but, you know, people are more important than things. They make carpet cleaners, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't worried about it. Right. But when he spilled it, I watched him. Mm -hmm. And he kind of <laughs> looked at me, and his hand was just kind of wiping it. Uh. <laughs> now, 
what he was really doing was just smearing it in. Sure, sure. And, and that's what we do we when do. we try to cover our sin. Mm -hmm. we, we're not washing away. Mm -hmm. All we're really doing is just kind of oh, kind of smearing it yeah. in. And that's what children do, or people that don't have understanding mm -hmm. of what it takes mm -hmm. Uh, to get rid of that stain uh, for our uh, for us as believers, it's the blood of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that cleanses us. But God is not just going to let it go. Mm -hmm. I was reading a text in Exodus uh, 34 and 7. And, and, and this is speaking of God. It says, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will not or who will by no means clear the guilty. I'm going to stop right there. Mm -hmm. Now, th there's some tension in that text. Mm -hmm. The tension in that text is that he forgives iniquity, transgression, and sins, mm -hmm. but then he says, but he will in no wise um, clear mm -hmm. the guilty. Mm -hmm. There's tension there. You say you forgive, but right. you won't clear the guilty. Right. The tension in that text is um, the guilty of those who are unrepentant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, who are unrepentant. If we hold on to our sins and we keep on trying to smear it smear in, and, instead of giving that thing to God and mm -hmm. allowing his blood to be applied to our lives mm -hmm. by repentance and mm -hmm. confession, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we remain guilty. Mm -hmm. We hold on to that thing. God, you feel the weight of that. You feel the weight of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was David says in Psalms 31, he says, man, when I was unrepentant, mm -hmm. when I would not, when I did not confess my <laughs> sins to God, he said, I felt like my bones were breaking. That's right. You know, I felt like I was shriveling up. That's like right. I was, I was dying. And, but, and it wasn't until I released that thing to God that I felt freedom and liberty. And, and I know that to be true. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you do as well. But the beauty of the gospel were you going to say something like that? Well, well first, you know, John, first John, I was going to jump in. <laughs> first John 1, 8, 9 says, if we say we have no sin, right. we deceive ourselves. Yes. Uh, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is yeah. faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Reminds me of when I uh, I found a Christmas gift one year when I was little. I found, found it. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I opened it, but I did not know how to wrap. Right. Wrap it back. <laughs> and I tried to wrap it. I tried to wrap it. But, you know, um, my mother put less tape on it in the beginning uh -huh. than I put it on it in the end. So I exposed myself. Yeah. And so it's just a, it's a lot easier sometimes just to confess <laughs> rather than to try to cover it up. <laughs> try to cover it up. Oh, I like that one. It's hilarious. <laughs> I've done something similar to that. Move <laughs> basketball and try to repackage the basketball. Um but the beauty of the gospel is this. The Bible talks about in Romans, the third chapter, where it's talking about uh, why Christ died. Mm -hmm. oh, a quick crazy story about this. I remember being in a class one day, and the instructor, Bible college, the instructor asked, why did Christ die? Mm -hmm. You know, And me, I jumped up real quickly. And I was like, he died for me. He died for me. John 3, 16, he died for me. And he looked at me and he said, okay, then that's a secondary purpose uh -huh. for why Christ died. Okay. Christ really died to um, to um, show forth the Father's righteousness. Amen. Amen. It was about the Father's righteousness. It was about God being just Amen. and being the justifier. Um, because you look in the Old Testament, and we say that the Old Testament was about God's wrath and the New Testament is about God's mercy. Mm -hmm. Have you read the Old Testament? <laughs> Do you know what David got away with? What what was Samson and some of these other guys, the stuff they got away <laughs> with? Man, they they absolutely experienced the grace of, God. grace of God. They got away with some stuff. Mm -hmm. So in the new covenant, and God said, listen, y'all ain't getting away with nothing else. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to play that game. Sin <laughs> must be <laughs> atoned for. Amen. It must be be dealt with. Amen. I will not excuse the guilty. It mm -hmm. must be dealt with. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus died to deal with our sin. And if you read through Romans, that third chapter, one, one of the last statements it makes uh, when it's addressing the fact that Jesus died to vindicate God's righteousness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he talks about God being just and justifying. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the reality. If God just forgave us of our sin mm -hmm. with no one um, paying the penalty for our sin, God would be unjust. It's just like, you know, if a rapist goes to court, he had raped 10 people, murdered about five others, robbed some folk, and he stands before the judge, and the judge simply acquits him? 
when all the evidence points mm -hmm. towards the fact that this brother is guilty of this sin mm -hmm. and the judge simply acquits him, man, we would be marching right. in the streets. Mm -hmm. We would try to disbar <laughs> that judge. We would do all kinds of stuff because that is unjust. Mm -hmm. And many people think that's how, think that's how God functions. Mm -hmm. It is not. Sin has to be atoned for. Mm -hmm. So take that same scenario. Uh, what God has done is that he has someone standing before him that is guilty. You're guilty of murder, <laughs> slander, yes. rape, uh, homosexuality, whatever it is. You're guilty of those sins. All right? And what God does, he decrees you guilty, mm -hmm. but then he comes off the bench. Mm -hmm. And then God says, <laughs> you know what? I will serve his time. Wow. I wow. will pay that debt. That. Yes, that's Lord. beautiful. Amen. That's one. That's the wonder of the cross. Amen. So sin must be atoned for, and and God sending His Son Jesus Christ to atone for our sins, it vindicates God's righteousness, and it also decrees the fact that God is just, Amen. and He is the justifier. And you know, He and the benefit or the blessing of that. So just talking about our heavenly Father and uh, holding us. Uh, accountable, but being merciful and gracious. Yeah, you know he chases those he loves. Oh my God. And we want him to. Yeah. A good father. Oh, a good father. Amen. Is going to correct. Yes. A good father is going to love, but he's going to correct. He's yeah. going to redirect. He's going to give uh, consequences. Absolutely. Um, as he sees fit. But, yeah. You know we understand that all unrighteousness is sin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he's there to, to cover that sin. Yeah. But we have to come to him. We have to come to access that. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about it is that. Uh, our coming in, uh, our coming to him mm -hmm. is him drawing us. Amen. And no one comes to the Father unless the Father draws Amen. him. Amen. Uh, John 15 says, you didn't choose me, but I, I chose, chose you. you. <laughs> All right? And so let's don't get it twisted Amen. here, bro. Uh, that God is the one who woos Amen. us. He's the one that comes after us. To bear fruit. That, to bear fruit. And he is the initiator of this relationship. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so the warfare you feel in your spirit, the opposition you feel in your soul as someone who's not a Christ mm -hmm. follower, mm -hmm. hey, let's give into that thing because that is God pulling you. That is God drawing you. That is God in the process of rescuing you. And notice I said Thank process you, because every single one that he has decreed for salvation will come, come to, to him. him. And so you may come in on broken pieces. You may come, come in, thank the Lord. <laughs> um, but we are witnesses right. Right, that you're going to come. Amen. Amen. Even if your thoughts and your mind and your, and your ambitions aren't towards coming, mm -hmm. listen, you, it, there's no way you can resist the grace of God. That's a different conversation Amen, for a different right, day. Right. Uh, but when we start talking about God through his son, Jesus Christ, atoning for our sins, mm -hmm. this thing is rooted in the Old Testament. It gives us these prophetic images mm -hmm. to draw from to help us to understand the fullness of uh, the substitutionary atonement and helps us understand also why understanding this was so liberating mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. as a believer. Uh, John 1 29 says, John looks over while he's baptizing and he says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. Now sometimes people don't get the full weight of what John was <laughs> talking about. But you got to remember that John is talking mostly to a Jewish a crowd. Mm -hmm. And so the, the pursuit or looking for a lamb for atonement was something that was very familiar to them. Mm -hmm. So he looks across and, and he sees Jesus coming and he says, behold the lamb of God. Then he makes an assignment that ties Jesus coming to the day of atonement, a young Kupar. Mm -hmm. He ties Jesus mm -hmm. to that and mm -hmm. he says that behold the Lamb of God that takes away mm -hmm. the sins of the world. In the minds of those that were around, they understood exactly what they what that meant. Mm -hmm. they, they, they couldn't embrace it all because mm -hmm. he didn't come in the package they anticipated. Right. <laughs> but they knew that there was something different about this guy, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus Christ, and he was about the work of Jesus Christ. You know, in, in Isaiah 60. Work of his father, rather, correct. Sure. The, the, in Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, it says this, uh, Jesus says that the, the sovereign Lord is on me. Yeah. Because the Lord has anointed me. Yeah. To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind, Amen. to heal yeah. uh, the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and freedom from darkness for the prisoners. Yeah. That's how... Think about this. When John the Baptist was in prison, mm -hmm. 
And he, this is the St. John the Baptist that looked over and saw Jesus coming <laughs> and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was in prison. Mm -hmm. And he told his disciples, Hey, listen, go find that man that y'all heard me proclaim that mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Go ask him, is he the one? Now, John had already pro sure. proclaimed that he was the one. Right. He said, go find him and ask him, is he the one mm -hmm. or should we look for another? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went to Jesus and said, listen, Jesus, John, you know, he's in prison. He's trying to figure out, <laughs> are you the one or should we be looking mm -hmm. for another? Mm -hmm. And John, and Jesus says to him, he says, go tell them the things that you have seen Amen. and you've heard. Amen. Read that text again. It says, the spirit of the, the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news yeah. to the poor. He has He was doing me. that. Amen. Doing. He has sent me to bind, to heal the brokenhearted. To, he was doing that. To proclaim freedom for the captives. Jesus was doing that. And freedom from darkness. <laughs> he was told the prison. That. Look, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Amen. And provide for those who grieve in Zion yes. to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of, of despair. despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, righteousness. a planting of the Lord Amen. for the display of his splendor. Jesus said, go back and tell them what you've seen Amen. and what you've heard. All you got to do is read through the Gospels and you say, see that Jesus was already doing that work. Amen. He was doing that work. They could see that. And so there was nothing else that Jesus needed to say. There's no <laughs> other proof he needed to give than the fact that he was fulfilling mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, messianic mm -hmm. ministry which his father had given him to do on the earth. But to tap back into the Day of Atonement, there was this, him being the Lamb of God, if you read Leviticus, the 16th chapter, mm -hmm. it talks about, first of all, which I thought was amazing, he starts off that 16th chapter by saying, Moses, go tell your brother, mm -hmm. don't come to me mm -hmm. any way he wants to, mm -hmm. and any time he wants to, but the next time he better go wash himself, <laughs> atone for his own sins, mm -hmm. and then come into my, my presence. Mm -hmm. This was after he had already killed his mm -hmm. Aaron's sons. Mm -hmm. And then he begins to give Aaron a process of atoning mm -hmm. or cleansing. Sure. First, he had a sacrifice of bulls, <laughs> sprinkled that on the mercy seat for his own sins. The book of Hebrews says we don't have a high priest that has to atone for his own sins mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. He was already pure and clean. And then the second thing he had to do was to take two goats, mm -hmm. right? There was one goat, or the first goat, uh, his neck had to be slit. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to be bloodlet, and then that blood was to be sprinkled on the mercy seat of the Ark of Covenant. Now, now what happened in that moment was that goat took on all the mm -hmm. sins. Now, Amen. they had to find a, a pure goat, pure goat, a spotless, spotless goat, goat. <laughs> symbolic of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Had to be true. It had to be spotless, and the sins of the people were placed on that mm -hmm. goat. He was bloodlet. The, the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat, uh, and the wrath of God was appeased. Mm -hmm. uh, that term is known as propitiation. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, God's wrath was satisfied mm -hmm. uh, in that work. And so, what does that say? That talks about. Go back to my scenario I gave earlier. Uh, how the enemy constantly brought to my sure. mind sure. that I ripped the page out of the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, put reefer in it, rolled it up, and smoked mm -hmm. a big fat uh, uh, cigarette, reefer cigarette, and how that bothered me for years. Mm -hmm. Man, when I understood uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the substitutionary atonement, what that made me aware of was the reality that Jesus Christ has already absorbed Amen. my wrath Amen. even for that act. Took the penalty. And let me tell you what, took the penalty. Why is that so important? Because many of us, we still, though we consider mm -hmm. ourselves to be Christian, mm -hmm. we still walk in shame. We still walk in guilt. We he died for that. He died for that. He died for that. And we, rose for that. He rose for that. <laughs> we still worrying about the acts that we committed before Christ, and even after mm -hmm. we've come mm -hmm. into his mm -hmm. kindness, we're still worried about those things. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, God is not. Mm -hmm. If you are a Christian, God's not worried about that stuff. Um, that's why I don't mind. My children tell me all the time, say, Dad, 
Why, when you preach, uh -huh. <laughs> you tell those people your business? Why you tell them the stuff you've done? Mm -hmm. I said, I tell them because mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed of Amen. it anymore. That mm -hmm. wrath has been absorbed mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That shame is gone. Mm -hmm. That guilt mm -hmm. is gone. Mm -hmm. So I don't care who knows about mm -hmm. it. People can talk about it all over the city because that's who I used to be. That is not who I am today. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. And, and you're not, you understand that Christ has delivered you from that. He Amen. set you free from that. Amen. You understand that he's covered you from that, healed you from that. Amen. But you understand what also what you what you did, the sin that occurred right. in that. Right. So you acknowledged it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you confess that sin. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing that God is faithful and just to forgive yeah. Yeah. and to cleanse. Yeah. And and so it's not as if you're looking at the situation from the perspective that, you know, this 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 thing that I committed, this act, this a thought, imagination, whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, that this thing has a hold on me and can keep me yeah. from obtaining the victory that Christ has for me. Absolutely. You know, that thing is it, it's gone. Yeah. It's, he, he's washed it away. Yeah. Uh, he, he's he's even giving you a different perspective yeah. about who he is, yeah. though you went through that circumstance in your life. Yeah. You see him differently. I see him differently. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. One of the things is, uh, I was reading the book of Hebrews 12, 24. It says, the blood speaks better than words. It speaks better than words. The blood speaks better than words. So I don't have to vindicate myself mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. those scenarios mm -hmm. when I have committed a sin. Mm -hmm. I don't have to live in shame. I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about people knowing about mm -hmm. it because the blood speaks. Amen. The blood screams. He is free from that. That has been atoned for. The wrath has been absorbed in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the prophetic message, Thank you, one of them, from Leviticus, the 16th chapter, mm -hmm. that God, through his son Jesus Christ, has absorbed our wrath, Thank you, God. and I am no Thank longer you, guilty. Amen. We don't have enough room in shouting here, George, so try to continue oh. yourself. <laughs> try to continue yourself. <laughs> amazing grace, amazing grace. How could it be? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, in Romans five nineteen it says for as by the one man's disobedience yes. to Adam yeah. the many were made sinners so yeah. by the one man's obedience Jesus yeah. Yeah. the many will be made righteous be made righteous Amen. and the beautiful thing about that righteousness is not a self righteousness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is not because Amen. I Amen. am a good guy right. or I figured out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how to do this thing right or oh, I've I've embraced the five steps that the pastor preached about mm -hmm. Sunday to holiness mastered it. They are mastering the five steps, and, and I'm a witness that you can master those five steps right. and still, still walk in that's right. shame. That's right. That's right. I've, I've done that. I've been that route mm -hmm. before, and that's why I know that the gospel works and the blood speaks louder than words. Um, but there's a second prophetic um, aspect of mm -hmm. Leviticus 16 because there were two goats. And so there was a second goat, and the second goat uh, was what we call the scapegoat. Mm -hmm. And what the priest would do, he would bring that goat forward and he would lay both hands mm -hmm. upon the people mm -hmm. and he would proclaim the sins of the people upon that goat. All right, now, he must have been there a long time because there's a whole lot. <laughs> he would proclaim the That's sins right. of the people. And another thing that the Bible said, he, he had to lay both hands on. Mm -hmm. Okay, that preaches. That's a different sure. thing. He had to lay both hands mm -hmm. on, proclaim the sins of the people, and then send him outside mm -hmm. the camp. Mm -hmm. He would go outside the camp, and uh, history tells us he uh, would go to Az Azrael, or I forget what the name of that place was, and, and fall off that cliff, okay. you know, um, that the prophetically or the spirit would lead him out into the wilderness uh, to a cliff. He would fall off and die. Mm -hmm. And that was symbolic mm -hmm. of the fact that, man, that Jesus takes not only uh, our wrath and absorbs that, mm -hmm. but our sin consciousness, right. that that stain of guilt that's in our minds mm -hmm. that suppresses us, mm -hmm. that constantly mm -hmm. makes us feel mm -hmm. that we're unworthy, we are undeserving of mm -hmm. his love. Mm -hmm. And that's what shame means. What is it about me that makes me unworthy of love? Mm -hmm. uh, he takes all of that, uh, all of my sin, and he takes it into the wilderness and he disposes it in such a way that it could never come back to haunt me. The thing that blesses me about that is uh, the scripture that says, he that the son set free 
It's free indeed. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's free indeed. Yeah, it's complete forgiveness here, Amen. my brother. Amen. Complete forgiveness. Amen. And so when you consider it, that through the cross of Jesus Christ, he has propitiated our sins, he's absorbed mm -hmm. God's wrath, mm -hmm. and he's also expiated our sins. That means he has washed us clean. clean. Um, man, why wouldn't you praise God when you hear yes, that that's the answer mm -hmm. to all of our woes? Amen. That Jesus Christ, the cross of Christ, mm -hmm is the answer it is that which our soul has been longing for yes, the God. freedom and the liberty yes, to move forth mm -hmm. leaving all that junk behind us it is the cross of christ and i'm telling you when i got clarity on that <laughs> my brother Amen. that changed Amen. my life it's, li it's liberating it's, it is liberating we, to allow you uh, when you reflect on it, it gives you that perspective that you know what, God, there's a freedom that I can enjoy in you yeah. that I have not been enjoying. Yeah. That you say, I yeah. should be enjoying. Yes. This is the benefit of knowing me and loving me yes. and allowing me to wash you and to cleanse you. Your heart, your, I, I change, I'll change your mind. Yeah. I'll change your heart, your passions, your desires. Uh, you'll be giving those things to me. Some things are over time. It's, it's a process. Yeah. But, but God does that work in us and we trust him yeah. to just like his work is a complete work. Right, right. He does not stop in the middle of his work. Yeah, He's right. going to finish what he started. Yeah, the beautiful thing about that, to, 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 to add another aspect mm -hmm. of the gospel mm -hmm. to this, uh, like, for instance, we, we are liberated, we are freed by the gospel of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. but then there is this progressive sanctification, Amen. as you just made mention of, uh, that happens throughout the remainder of our lives. If there is no clarity on the gospel message, every time mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. sin, uh -huh. Uh -huh. as you're walking through your progressive sanctification process, you will you, you will again take on that guilt mm -hmm. and take on that mm -hmm. shame mm -hmm. and take all that on. But when you realize that Jesus, <laughs> once for all, Amen. has taken that from us mm -hmm. and, and, and has freed us, has liberated us, I, I love this statement. Um, John Piper makes it. Um, that he has not only forgiven me of my past and current sins, mm -hmm. but he's already taken care of my future yes. sins. Amen. <laughs> of my future sins. Amen. That, I hope we get Amen. that. That's that right. is powerful. Yes. My, my, since I have not even committed Amen. yet, Amen. he has already Thank taken care of those sins. <laughs> so even as I'm moving through on my progressive sanctification <laughs> journey, <laughs> I don't have to go to a point of despair mm -hmm. when I fall off the wagon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to fall off the wagon, mm -hmm. bro. I, I'm a, I could apostatize today if someone you know, made that statement. I, I could do that today right. if it wasn't for the grace That's of right. God right. uh, sustaining me and keeping me. Uh, and I thank God for that that gospel message. It is like giving something to God, but then taking it back, giving it to him. Give yeah. it to him completely. Yeah. Yeah. Give it to me completely, yeah. totally. Yeah, and I see we all, because we do altar ministry and we're involved in teaching ministry and stuff like that, uh, we see people in that that quandary all the time mm -hmm. where um, they, there's a sin they just committed mm -hmm. and immediately they go to a place of despair. Mm -hmm. And what we have to communicate to them, to your point, is that you have to fight the good fight of faith. Fight it. Fight it. Right, and we talk a lot about spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. or there are there those that talk a lot about spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. and and I, and, and I, I embrace some of that, mm -hmm. not all of that, but I embrace mm -hmm. some of that. Um, but what I fully embrace is fighting the good fight of faith. The Amen. good fight of faith is that constant struggle to believe the gospel. <laughs> Amen. Now, to to think about the things that you've done. Not just years ago, but yesterday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to believe that, or oh, an hour ago, yes. and, and, and the struggle to believe that Jesus Christ on the cross, He has already taken care of that act, and I'm freed. All I got to do is confess that thing to Him. The struggle to believe mm -hmm. that, because again, mm -hmm. it goes back to what I said earlier. It seems to be news that's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can that <laughs> be absolutely true? Because okay. nobody forgives like Amen. that. Amen. You commit an act, a, a, a sin against someone or offense to someone, mm -hmm. sometimes they hold that offense Success. against yeah. you for years. Right. There's certain people you walk carefully around because you know, <laughs> if you don't, man, you want to deal with this for the next 30 years. <laughs> but with God, that is not Amen. so. He Amen. is not like a man. Amen. And so we, we don't have to live in that, content, that, that, that constant tension and mm -hmm. fear mm -hmm. 
and depression, all we got to do is give that thing to God, to confess that thing to God, and we are freed. We are delivered. I mean, just, just that, the thought about, um, you know, pressing toward the mark yeah. for the prize of the high calling through Christ Jesus. Yeah. It, it's going to be a press. It's going to be a press. It's, it's going to be some some challenge, some some adversity, you know, fighting the good fight. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but that's what we're, we've been made for. Yeah. That's what we've been... That's why he's in us. Yeah, that yeah. we we don't give up, that we don't quit, but that we trust in him, and uh, we do our part. Yeah, in yeah. fighting that good fight. Yeah, one of the things I like to tell people at uh, Impact DMV Church is, um, I go to war every day with the sins Amen. in my life. Amen. We talked about it last night. I, I go to war every day with the sin that is in my life, not just out of some moralistic, <laughs> legalistic <laughs> obligation. Sure, sure. But when I, pers- when, I, when I consider how good God, God has is. been, when I consider the glories of the cross, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. he would die mm-hmm. for me, it's that gospel message that compels me to go to war, go to war with the sin that is in my life. Amen. To fight that good fight of faith, mm-hmm. to not allow myself, even when I fall, to, to go to a position or a posture mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of depression or shame sure. or guilt. Sure. And, and so I, I've had some experiences. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've done some things, and I'm not talking about years ago. Mm-hmm. I've had some experiences since I've been sure. saved sure, sure. where I thought to myself, Lee, you know better than that. Mm-hmm. All right? mm-hmm. Or I thought to myself, after being saved this many years, why is that still in my life? Right. Why am I still struggling with right. this? Right. Um, but in those moments, I remember the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he's not only died for my past and present sins, uh, but my future sins, and he's already taken all of that into account. Amen. Just Isaiah 53 and 10, it was the will of the Lord to crush him, to break him. Ooh. He took our place. Took our place. Amen. He died in our yes, stead. So, so, John. Let's go back mm-hmm, to John mm-hmm, 129. Mm-hmm. So when he looks across and he says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes <laughs> away, that removes the sin of the world, mm-hmm. he's talking about the wrath, God's steady opposition mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. you, and he's also talking about he's taking away that shame that we feel because of the sin that's in our lives. One other thing that I want to say about this is also important. The expiation, the scapegoat is important for us to embrace because there's some people in here that say, for instance, you did not commit a sin. Well, we're all sinners. But the defense that bothers you mm-hmm. is not so much what you've done, but what's been done to you. Mm-hmm. And so there's individuals that may be listening or watching us that maybe you were raped, maybe you were abused, and it's just the shame and the guilt that we possess at times when we've been offended. Uh, the question is, what what do I do with that? Mm-hmm. Well, what I'm telling you is that scapegoat is for you. I mean, that, that God, through his son Jesus Christ, he washes mm-hmm. us. That expiation has to do with washing mm-hmm. us of that shame, washing us of that guilt and removing that thing far from us. I think it's in Psalms 103. It says that as far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions from us. And so I I just want to impart that to you because I think you may hear what we're saying Mm -hmm. and think, okay, well, maybe I didn't smoke reefer. Maybe I didn't do whatever it is, but I have been abused. Mm -hmm. I've been sinned against. (laughs) What do I do with that? And I'm telling you that the cross of Christ is sufficient. Uh, Again, maybe, again, you may not have done any of the things Mm -hmm. that we've done, and you've taken pride in the fact that you never drank, smoked, Mm -hmm. uh, or no go with girls that do those types Mm -hmm. of things. Uh, Listen, you still need the cross of Christ. Uh, there's a there's a parable about the prodigal son. One son went off and just enjoyed his life, committed every sin mm-hmm. he could imagine doing, but then he came back. The other son never left. He was in the father's house the whole while. When the son that wandered came back, the father killed the fatty calf, mm-hmm. man. They celebrated <laughs> because the son that had gone away, had that returned. he had been looking for, had returned. Amen. But that older brother who'd been in the house the whole while, yeah. Yeah. He did not rejoice with them. Mm-hmm. He could not rejoice mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason why, because he, he even said to the father, he said, Father, I've been with you the whole while. I hadn't gone anywhere. But this son who went off, man, you killed a fatty calf, <laughs> give him a new robe, a new ring. Okay, how about me? 
And in my, when I look at that story, the major problem in that text was the older brother. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the younger brother. It was the older brother. What did he need to repent of? Mm -hmm. He needed to repent of his self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so if you're listening to us today, and you maybe you've never committed the sins or the things that we've done, you still need the cross of Christ mm -hmm. because for some reason you think that you've pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps. And what I'm here to tell you is, is that the reason why you are who you are is because God has been faithful and the grace of God has been sufficient. So listen, we, we're here near the end. I guess we're at the end. Uh, this hour was not as long as I thought it was going to be. I thought, <laughs> I thought we were going to be here looking at, our, at each other for a little while. But we actually talked this whole time. But we're going to encourage you to tune in uh, next Friday at 830 uh, to Compelling Conversations. Next week, our plan is to open up the lines uh, and allow you to dialogue with us on some of these issues. Uh, but I pray that uh, you'll be praying for us. We are new to this thing. Right. But we are so excited that God has graced us to be able to do this. And um, if uh, this weekend we're going to be celebrating our first year anniversary at the church, <laughs> one year, uh, if you can be with us, Impact Amen. DMV, come on down. Google it, come on down and celebrate with us. God bless you.